Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to today's edition of, uh, well, I don't know what to call it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed yesterday's construction video. I will go back there again when it is completed so you can see a before and after of that, uh, what looks like to be a wonderful, wonderful uh, residence. Uh, some of them I said were three story, if you noticed in the video, some of them are even four stories. So there's gonna be quite a number of uh, residents, apartment housings. I don't believe those basement things were garages. I thought they might've been garages. I think that's just more doors that are gonna be put on for lower level apartments. To tell you frankly, I don't know where they're gonna park their vehicles. It's especially, I know it's not gonna be on uh, old Bee Cave Road. Anyway, um, I wanna go over a few things. This is a continuation of our uh, vehicle maintenance uh, series of videos. Uh, just some important items that I think uh, everybody should know. I'm gonna look at my watch and time myself. And uh, if you remember, last time we went over the nine signs, you found the right auto repair shop. And today I'm gonna go over uh, some very important items for all you uh, vehicle owners that may help you uh, formulate a better decision in your maintenance schedule. Uh, this is your guide to modern auto maintenance and this is out of my AARP magazine and again this is uh, when is this this is uh, September 2020 and uh, it's still true today. Uh, cabin air filter. Cabin air filters made to improve interior air quality only become common, only became common in the year 2000. The filter is tucked behind the glove box, under the dashboard, or under the hood. Uh, and it needs to be replaced about every year. You can do this yourself, but you may twist yourself into knots to reach it. And these are uh, air quality filters. They're common on air, aircraft or airplanes. And uh, we used to change those uh, in the paperwork. Fluids. Dipstick showed if you had enough oil and automatic transmission fluid for brake, power steering, and windshield washer fluids. You just eyeball the reservoir for coolant you'd pop the radiator cap and look. Now, some cars no longer have oil and transmission dipsticks, relying on sensors to notify you if there's an issue. Hands off the radiator cap. Instead, go to a separate reservoir tank under the hood that lets you see if the coolant is low. Mechanics top off all fluids during routine maintenance. And before I drove my truck to uh, Austin, Texas, I had all the fluids in my vehicle checked, serviced, rechecked, Hoses realigned that might uh, cause damage with overheating. And my mechanic, he did a wonderful job and the, the vehicle did make it. It's a shame that I wrapped it up once I got here. Uh, engine oil filter. You pop open the hood, spin a wing nut, pull off the air cleaner, cover and drop in a new filter. That's the way it used to be. Now it's not quite so easy. You need to be careful not to damage the electronic air sensor wiring that is often built into the air cleaning housing. Figure on a new filter every year or two, depending on your driving. Wash and wax. Used uh, dish soap and water, uh, a sponge to wash, hose to rinse. Use a leather uh, 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 camias to dry. Applied wax several times a year. That's the way it used to be done. Now, the only right thing about the early way is the hose. The rest could dull and scratch car paints, but specifically for multi-layered car wash soap, less harsh, and use a wash mitt and microfiber drying towel and research whether ceramic coatings would work better if your car's body than conventional wax. Most people I know go to just the gas station, the, uh, I mean, not the gas station, the car wash. Uh, but those car washes are getting pretty pricey too. You can spend 20 bucks, 25 bucks on a car wash. Some car washes are offering monthly services. 
you pay on a monthly basis and you get unlimited car washes in a given month. So that's a big thing. Car washes are a big, big business in California. Uh, all these fancy brand new cars, they want to be kept clean. Air conditioning, then and now, needs attention only if there's a leak in the system. If a technician says you need a Freon recharge, either there's a leak that should be fixed first or you're being scammed. Brakes, then and now, have your brake pads checked with other regular service. When they get worn down, have them replaced. It will depend on the car, but that's likely somewhere between 30,000 and 50,000 miles. How you drive also plays a factor. City driving, especially in stop and go traffic, will tend to wear out brakes faster than cruising the highway. Of course, stopping and going will wear out your brakes considerably quicker. Uh, tire tread, then, if there was enough tread left to touch Lincoln's head on a penny upside down, you were good. Now, a penny still works, but to get a more precise reading, it's easier to buy a tire depth gauge from the auto parts store for a few bucks. Usually a two and 32nd inch tread or less is considered uh, unable to pass safety inspection. To prolong tread life, get tires rotated every 6,000 to 8,000 miles. Headlights and tail lights and turn signals. Then you'd pull out the bulb and push in a new one. Now modern vehicle lights, halogen, Zaxxon and LED may last for as long as you own your car. And if not, many remain pretty easy to replace. Wiper blades. Then you'd buy a rubber insert and slide it on to replace the worn blade. Now buy a package that has the blades already fastened into their springy holders. It comes with a batch of adapters to make it fit the wiper arm of, on your car. Uh, tire pressure then, if it looked low, it probably was. Modern radial tires always look a bit low. Their flat bottom stance gives the tire a wider footprint for better traction, so don't eyeball it. Check tire pressure once a month or every, other, or, or every other refueling. I don't know who has time for that. Uh, use your own uh, dial type or digital tire gauge. Use the tire pressure number printed on a decal on the driver's door jam to determine the right levels. And the side of the tire gives maximum pressure, uh, not recommended pressure. Front tires often require different pressure levels than the back tires in newer cars. This is a real rub to me. I don't know why gas stations or fueling stations don't offer free, free, free air. They make you pay. And a lot of times it's out of service or been vandalized. But the price of the fuel in certain places like California, I mean, it should be free. Give us the free air, you know, you know charging us for air. I mean, uh, it just seems like another one of those money grabs where you, they try to ex uh, extract every last bit of money you have in your pocket. So um, that's tire pressure. Oil changes. Uh, then uh, changed oil every 3,000 miles. Easily done at home. Now schedules vary by car. Changes could be once a year or wait as long as 15,000 miles. Uh, particularly for newer cars requiring sy synthetic oil. Check owner's manual or trust your dashboard service reminders or idiot lights they're, they're called by a lot of people. Uh, uh, which should be set to match the manual. Have it done professionally. It's difficult to remove a modern vehicle's underbody panel. You're not kidding. They're not making it easy to repair or fix or maintain or service your, your new type of car. Uh, engine air filter. Uh, you'd pop open the hood, spin a wing nut. Yeah, we did that one already. I think that's about it. And this was the, the cars we grew up with had little more complexity than a lawnmower. Accelerate to today and the technical changes are almost unimaginable. Here are the rules of car care and how they've changed over the years. So I thought you'd find this interesting. Yeah. And the last thing on this, 
is what does the engine uh, check engine light really mean? And what this means, it can mean anything from a loose gas cap to a major engine problem. If the light is flashing or red instead of the, uh, uh, of the usual orange, that's bad trouble. Get to a shop right away. If it's steady or comes on and goes off intermittently, you have, a, you have some headroom. I know a lot of people who drive their car continuously, even though those lights are on. I'm one of them. Uh, check that gap, uh, gas cap. Uh, check that the gas cap is tight. I've had a friend who had the same problem. And then he replaced the gas cap, and uh, I think the light is back on. So uh, there's, a, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a freebie fix you can do. Shut off the car and reset uh, car and restart several times if necessary to see if the light stays off. If it stays on, let a shop diagnose your vehicle with a scanner that reads the trouble codes. Uh, stored in the vehicle's electronic memory. Mm. A 2020 survey by diagnostic site carmd.com, that's carmd.com, said the most common problems associated with the check engine light and their average repair cost were, number one, catalytic converter, very expensive repair. $1,376 to replace the Cadillac catalytic converter. And what's that? That's an anti-pollution device that a lot of vehicles are, are the victims of theft. People will uh, just cut it right out of the bottom of your car and steal it because they're so expensive. $1,376 for a catalytic converter. Uh, two, it could be an oxygen sensor. That's $246. Dollars. These are these are in U.S. Uh, currency. You can uh, determine what they are in your hometown. Uh, ignition coil and spark plugs. Number three, three hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Uh, number four, loose fuel cap, twenty-five dollars for a replacement if broken. And the last one, number five, mass airflow sensor, three hundred and forty-six dollars. So those are could, those are some of the reasons that your uh, check engine light may be going on. So that's the end, just a short one today, just to uh, fill you in on some important information. I know uh, today a lot of people own vehicles and uh, I think that was a very helpful thing. It's good to know, just, just enough to know, uh, to know, to know what you don't know, what you need to know, what they know, and what they're telling you that you need to know. Uh, today, uh, Today I'm positioning myself, I wanted to show you some of the uh, damage that this, this severe Texas uh, weather pattern that we had uh, did to some of the plants here in, in, in Texas. As you can see, it just disseminated these. These are, look at, the, look at the palm. Now I've seen some people taking these palms out. I don't know. So I'm not going to try to give any false predictions or information that I'm not sure of, but I've seen some people pulling these palms out. So I don't know if the weather actually killed them, if they have perished, or will they come back? That's the big question. And as some of you who are listening or viewing this have more knowledge about uh, some of these type plants and what they can take and what they can't take, but certainly you can just see the, uh, the horrific damage that that uh, freezing temperatures and snow caused uh, these plants. And uh, it's just, uh, if you can see along this back wall, see, it's all just uh, been disseminated by the, the cold temperatures. Uh, even, I was thinking what will, even the deer at the gas station filling up, uh, I saw, uh, uh, I wasn't filling up because my car's in the shop at the Oak Hill Auto and Body. But deer were like, wow, the deer couldn't believe the temperature drop. And they were like, is this Pennsylvania or is this, uh, is this Texas? So I think the worst of the weather is out and, uh, 
So that's it for today. Just a quick video compared to what it was yesterday. And uh, I hope those uh, facts and uh, some of those uh, tips help you with your, uh, uh, with your vehicle maintenance and uh, proper care of your vehicle maintenance. So have a good day. Enjoy your day. Take care of your POV or your privately owned vehicle. And have a good day. Drive safe. And I'll have to tell you one thing that I've noticed since being here in Austin, Texas. It's very, very dangerous in the parking lots. People just don't go along the parking lots where they cut through the parking spaces left and right and they shoot out. And they do this all over the country. I don't know how it is in your country, but some of the most dangerous driving you'll ever do, and I mean this, is in parking lots. When you're driving your vehicle in a parking lot, if you can't read the license plate on the vehicles to your right or to your left, you're going too fast. People can't see you going 30, I see people going 35, 40 miles an hour in parking lots. There's no margin of error. You can't stop in time if someone's pulling out and vice versa if, if you're pulling in. I don't know, but so be careful in parking lots. The larger the parking lot, the more dangerous. And I know this from personal experience on Long Island when I was a young driver. God forbid, it, it, it almost happened to me. So follow parking lot etiquette, reduce your speed considerably, look out for other vehicles pulling in, backing in, and, and pedestrians uh, going to and from the retail outlets. Oh, I think the wind is gonna blow this tripod right over. No, it's okay. And uh, so be careful in parking lots. That's my advice for anybody who wants to be safe and keep their car in good working condition. Uh, I'll see you on the rebound. Have a great, 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 great day. And don't forget, tomorrow's Friday. Oh my God, I forgot the special events. What happened today in history? Well, the papers, I don't have the paper with. Do I have the paper? No, I don't have the paper. Lincoln and, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember that. Forget it, forget it. Uh, you know, you can't win them all. All right, coming around. Coming around.